introducing the original Blood Clad Podcast, not PS. Tune in semantic. Special dedication all the way from New York. Boom! Yeah, man, SWOT semantic. Yeah, me know. Boom! Soothing semantic. Yeah, me know. Big ups to the man. Soothing semantic. On another episode of Soothing Semantics, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Today we have, I would, I would confidently say, the most interesting guest I've had thus far, uh, Khalila Ali. For whoever doesn't know, she at a point was the wife of Muhammad Ali, and he definitely needs no introduction. Yes, he does. So, yeah, it's wild. Do, do you ever kind of, this is an interesting question I, I have to ask. What's that? Do you ever kind of... People like remember remember him and remember you when you were together. Do you ever kind of want to say, "Well, okay, I was I was married to him, but I have my own life." You know, the, the, do you get where I'm where I'm going? Yeah, but uh, to me, the fact that I wasn't just married to him, I helped his whole career. I s- sacrificed with him. I kept him positive until he was able to fight again. I kind of laid the roadway and supported him in his mission to get his license back. So it was a struggle, and um, we worked as a husband and wife as a team. Mm -hmm. As you would do uh, Jacqueline uh, Kennedy and Mr. Kennedy, Obama and his wife, these husband and wives, they work together on everything that they do. And the structure of his life, I gave him hope uh, when he had kind of really changed his whole life by being a philanthropist, being in a religion that was uh, uh, probably the most uh, infamous religion there was in America. And we lived as it was a nation within a nation because everything on on the inside of that world was my world. And that's the world that I was born in. Mm. It wasn't the world Lee was born in. Right. So I had to kind of guide him and structure oh. him as he structuring and supporting me with his uh, legacies. But most importantly, it was a part, it was just a man with a, with a person with an arm. My arm was his arm. That's important. Yeah, and that's the difference. So the legacy that he left is our legacy. It's not just his. It's our legacy. And to go back in that time to build up a man, to work with him with the civil rights and the human rights, and standing up for the rights of religion, and standing up for what we believe in, that was all on my watch from Jump Street since I was a child. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Well, I, I saw your I saw a video, an interview you, you did on YouTube with someone. I'm not sure who, who where the interview was, but you basically told the story of how he went from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. <laughs> that was a wild That's story. That's what my book is out. It's, it should be very interesting. Oh, you're like, putting a book out soon? Oh, it was it's it's like that close. It's uh, I've been wow. working on it for over forty years. Um, it's a it was a, it was a book that I had my struggles in trying to really expose. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time I decide not to do it, and everybody says I should do it because they want to know the story, and it hasn't been to, ever told. I mean, you think of, you know, how is it that. My story wasn't told in every story that his book was. I mean, where, where, why, why wasn't, why didn't they reiterate me mm-hmm. in in the story? It was all. It, it looked like they just focused all on him, and you know. So at that time, that was the most uh, valuable and very sensitive moment of his life. And uh, and the struggle right there. And it's, I wasn't just a, a wife sitting on the side, you know, collecting moss. You're very much, inv- very I was much very involved. very much involved. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, so I'll, also I would like to say I'm known as Dr. Kalila Kamacho Ali because of my doctrine in theology and as well as um, being the children's uh, uh, vanguard, the, the lady of the children. I have a passion with children and, uh, and adults, but the children is most important because the way I was raised, uh, I want the path of the, our children today to go down that path. Uh, to give them inspiration, to inspire them to open up so they can build their own legacy. And you cannot do that without developing good character. That's for sure. One of the most important things is to help the children to be focused on their character. I think in this day and age, you have more of an ability to develop your own character because there's social media and you can reach anyone in the world. The world's such a small place, but at the same time, a lot of younger kids and teenagers, when they see a role model, a lot of people, a lot of them don't necessarily choose the individuality. They just copy them. Oh, I, I like that athlete or I like that actor or actress. But it's, just... it, it's good to be inspired by mm -hmm. certain athletes and, and certain characters. But most importantly, they should admire their character. And they look mm -hmm. at it on a social media point of view as opposed to truly themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of celebrities, they develop uh, an image and half the time they, not, they do not support that image. And so a lot of children get disappointed. So if you have a person that has a good character, uh, the image it would be fine. Mm -hmm. the, you can't develop, develop an image without a character, without your own character there, That's because sure. it will show through and it will be contradictory. That makes a lot of sense. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to go into the story, though, because if you'd be willing to share it, the story of how, how you met Muhammad Ali. And That's That's interesting. That's what the whole book is about, basically. Mm -hmm. But what people don't know that I'm willing to tell and share with them is that I was a very young girl and I was supporting him and helping him along the way with the knowledge that I had. It's an incredible story, by the way. Yeah, it is. I it, was, it's I fun was. because, you know, if you look at all the stories about his wife and then it, they go, oh, she met him at a bakery. I saw him in a bakery. Honey, by the time I got to the bakery, it was he was asking me to marry him. I met the man at a young age. I was 10, but it wasn't about marriage then. It was just meeting the person. Mm -hmm. I was 10, and he was 18. And he was astounded by the things that I said to him as a young girl because I took my life very seriously. I take everything for your word. Um, you just can't say anything to me and I don't take notice why mm -hmm. you said that, mm -hmm. you know. So um, the thing of it is, is when he came to visit the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's empire, mm -hmm. in which I was raised in, he was interested in his lifestyle and the person who made it possible for Malcolm X to survive jail and mm. and to be a a speaker um and speaker of the people mm -hmm. you understand so that that was in my world he came to our school and see we was i was raised up in a school that taught literally taught us black history in the 50s because it was a private school the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's wife, Sister Clara Muhammad, she is so beautiful. She's the one that started the schools for young girls. Mm -hmm. And we also had a way of learning. It's called the MGT and the GCC. And that was mu Muslim girls training and generals in civilization class. All girls were uh, supposed to 
man, man, it's mandatory to join that. It's, it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can get out of it. So when you come, even at the age of 11, I think the Jewish people have it when a man becomes a man, he's 11. 13. Well, this is, is it 13? Mm -hmm. Well, we're 11. Right. All right. So, well, don't they also, I mean, they do circumcisions at 13, right? The men. Well, well, actually, they do, but usually it, that's the Jewish religion. Well, and the Islamic it religion, they do it at birth. We do it at birth. Okay. The eight days. Eight days. Eight days. Okay. It has to be, you have to awesome. be born. Oh, I thought it was like 13. No, the the minute you're born, we get circumcised. The minute mm -hmm. we're born. Okay. Yeah. Because we, we don't like to do it later because something is very painful. Yeah, of course. I don't okay. know. I guess I just was told otherwise, but okay. <laughs> but I, they have different ways. Certain people that did it at different times, they were taught different things. So don't even worry about that. That comes yeah, and goes. For sure. Yeah. Everyone gives you different stories. And it's, it's ironic because the Jewish faith and our faith are so similar. It's wild how similar they it are. It's like brother, sister similarities. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful. By the thing. way, do you are you familiar with Amari Stoudemire, the basketball player? He was it, in the NBA. Is he young? He's real. He's a pretty young guy. Yeah, I mean that's probably why. Right. I'm old school, so I kind of know the old guys. He's probably in his forties. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't know. My my kids are over forty, so. Yeah, but he. Yeah. So he just, he has he has. If I'm not mistaken, he. Has I might Jewish. know him by face. Sometimes I know people by their faces. Very. I mean, he was he was a big ball player okay so he he if i'm not mistaken had jewish blood but he f like fully converted like he did went through the whole conversion process and now he's an orthodox jew like it's it's a, yeah it's a, it's a very it's interesting story so he's he's been like interviewed all over and he's yeah. just very into the faith now and he that's just great yeah, yeah he seems very happy with that it. is great and you know what yeah. that's what made me who i am because of my faith i stuck with it you learn about it. You hear things. Your mother and father teach you certain things to be a certain way, you know. And then when you start mingling with the outside world and you start adapting to younger people's lives. Mm -hmm. But see, the only thing about it is that the Muslim religion, it carries on to your younger lives. It caters to your youth. It caters to your youth. Right. You're saying more so or differently than, than others? Yes. How yes. so? Uh, it's because uh, a lot of young people tend to sway away from what they're taught because mm -hmm. they don't think they're hip or whatever. But uh, the teachings of being faithful, no matter what your religion is. Mm -hmm. And I, I category down them to only three religions. That's it. That is the trinity of the world. There are only three. Mm -hmm. Major religions. And this religion is the religion that believes in one God. Right. And those three believes in one God. Mm -hmm. Anything else man-made that comes up after that, it falls underneath those three. You understand? So Judaism, Islam, Islam, Al Islam, and Christianity, those are the trinities. Abrahamic. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Because in the Jewish faith of Abraham mm -hmm. and uh and the Christian faith of Christ to Jesus, mm -hmm. and then you have uh the Prophet Muhammad under the Islamic rule of Islam. And each of these ways of life that people tone to cater to, um, they're all good. They're all giving knowledge of the, the, the supreme being, the creator. They all give homage to the creator. And there are words and stories that will justify their the ends of the world, mm -hmm. their ends of learning. What has happened in the past is a lesson for your future. It's all true. Yeah, well, history, it's, history, history repeats, itself. repeats itself all the time. Yeah. And people try to, oh, I don't like religion. I'm, it's not the religion that you don't like. It's the fact that people did not follow through with their beliefs. And you just 
dislike the people who did not follow through with their beliefs. It's not the religion that you don't like. It's the people who said they believe in something and they do the opposite. Let's just be honest hear, with one that. another. Right, I hear that. You just be honest. And, and, and just to be totally honest, I'm kind of straightforward like that. Mm. I'm a little raw in the edges, but mm. I'm straight. I don't bicker and backer back mm. and forth. I, you know, your opinion, whatever your opinion is or whatever that, it has nothing to do with it. Your right. opinion doesn't succeed over God's word ever. I was going to go back to the fact oh, okay. that uh, I just, when yeah. I was 10, that's mm-hmm. why I was saying the religious part. Mm-hmm. And uh, but we had black history in our schools in the 50s. They didn't have black history in any public schools. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if because of the regime of the bigotry and the hate with the white American, southern white American or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, um, and the slave mentality and the slave world that they went through. It was a tough road for blacks, and they had to stand up for themselves. And um, but the history, like I said, once you know your history, when you know where you came from, you know where you're going, and that's a big part of it. And by Ali did not know what I knew as a child uh, was a bit different, and he was, and we were taught that the names. The Muslim names are names of culture. Any other culture has respectful names. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a cultural name, a Jewish name, or something like that, Bernstein, or you know, you know, that's Zucker, European, by Zuckerman, the way. Zuckerman, that's European. But you, are you familiar at all with Sephardic Jews, with the, with the Jews from Middle Eastern? Yeah, yes, so I do. The, so, like in America, America, we all. But I'm saying in America. W- most Americans only know Jewish people as the Europeans, like Goldstein, Bernstein. Yeah, exactly. But there's a lot of a lot of Jews that have they Middle have, Eastern last names. Yeah, they have Middle so. Eastern last names, and they have cultural last names. You know, like yeah. Russian names and German names. Well, those they are have. European also. That was all Europeans, right? But the thing of it is, I was I was taught that our name is good as gold, mm-hmm. and that. By us being Muslims and we don't have our original names, we are supposed to have it in the future. How do you get, how do you explain that? It's like uh, like if you came up Charles Johnson, mm-hmm. or you come up um, uh, Glenda Smith. Um, if I would say here is Chung Lee Wong, mm-hmm. getting ready to come sit with you, automatically you're gonna picture or Asian, right, or Chinese, mm-hmm. okay. Um, automatically, before you even see the guy. Of course, right. Okay. If you say, here's come um, Jose Rodriguez, he's going to sit with you, you automatically will say, oh, that must be a Spanish guy. Right. Automatically. You don't even have to see the guy. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to see him. 100%. All right. If it's this, if it's Louis Bernstein, Ber- Bernie Bernstein, you know, uh, Mr. Hoffa, you'll think right away he's Jewish. Jewish, yeah. You don't even have to look at him. Right. But if you say here's Charles Robinson, Chuck Hunter, Ted Hunter, you don't know what color he is until you see him because they don't have their original names culturally. It was taken away. That's a very good you see what I'm saying? A valid point. You so did, when yeah. he came up to me mm-hmm. when I was 10, mm-hmm. he said, preaching and blazing that, wow, I'm going to be the heavyweight. He's 18 years old. He says, I'm going to be the heavyweight champion of the world before I'm 21, so get your autographs now because I'm going to be famous. I remember so him saying that. Cool. And then, he, and then he came down and gave his autograph to each and every one of the students in the auditorium, and I was kind of the last one because I was in the back, tall, yeah. And he said, here, little girl, I'm going to be famous. Well, I said, well, this your name? He said, yeah. I said, that says Cassius Marcellus Clay. Now, Cassius Marcellus, that's a Roman name. Did you know that? Do you know what the Romans did to people? And then you got clay, like dirt, you mold. You proud of this, my brother? He just said, I thought I was. I said, no, I tore up the autograph in his face. 
And as I was tearing it up, I said, until you have a name of honor, until you have a name of respect, matter of fact, until you have a Muslim name, you take that name back with you. I do not want it. Not even an autograph. I remember this exactly from the YouTube exactly. video. Exactly. Yeah. And he said, she told my name, man. She <laughs> told my name. Who does that? Who told my name? And he was like so hurt. I mean, you can't reject a pretty boy at that age, just wanted the Olympics, and you can, somebody going to tell your autograph up? That was cold. Yeah, that definitely but hurt him, to though. me, I was trying to teach him something about himself. And that's what we do. We teach. We hear something. It doesn't sit with us. Then we teach why. Well, this, this story. And that put a target on my forehead. <laughs> then on, the rest is history, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's that was amazing, and that happened to me at ten, and he was eighteen. Well, how did it continue? Wow! Now that now you got to read the book. Well, I know. <laughs> I, I already know. I already read the rest of the, the things in a book. You would have no clue happened to us. We got we got a cliffhanger, and we were building and building this relationship up for a long time, and it was just about interest because. I usually don't say too much of anything, but if something crossed my path that don't sound right, I'm going to open my mouth and start teaching. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yeah. And uh, he just kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it. Three years later, he was still thinking about it. And he went to the honor with Elijah Muhammad and said, I need a name. I need a name. I stood and represented y'all. I, I, I need a name. Okay. I'm going to give you Cassius X. He's oh, no, no, I can't have that. That's a Roman name. I can't have that. I got to have a Muslim name. I got to have a respectful name. He spoke up for himself then, at that time, and that was during the years of 1963 and 64. I was 14 by that time. So there's a little more demographics about that name, but when you find out how he got the name Ali, you're going to find out he got it from me, my that's, family. That's what's wild. You, from my family. You, Khalila, were the reason he his name exactly. is Muhammad. That's, that's right. He was the reason for asking for that name, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the one who chose that na those two names for him. Mm -hmm. He did name himself. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Unreal. This is amazing. Yeah. I think... The story of Cassius Clay is brilliant. Uh, happening to two, two young people learning about life, learning about the world. And um, if, I, I'm just saying, if they had found a Caucasian girl with blonde hair and blue eyes had went through the same story I went through, she'd be famous right now. Mm -hmm. She would be it would be amazing, you know. But I don't look at it as being famous. I look at it as being at the right time, at the right place, with the right person, my husband. And uh, that's, that's all what I supported at that time. It wasn't about me. It was about making sure he was known all over the world. Yeah, he, and that was my goal. Definitely was. That's for, that it is wasn't sure. about money. He didn't have money, so it wasn't about the money. It was about him being the person he wanted to be. And uh, and uh, that's why I came up and I had to go. When he didn't want to follow through that, I, I decided, to, you know what? It was such a beautiful journey that I learned so much by him helping him become famous and everything. He didn't just get famous because of his boxing. He got famous because of he spoken out for his religion. And he stood fast and did not back down. And I was part of his religious uh, background. Mm -hmm. I was because and supporting his religious background. The thing is, even though that he did not have enough sense to take all that he learned and supported his family, um, he just went all different kind of ways. A lot of celebrities, they get egos and they start 
going on different paths. Sometimes notoriety changes them. It happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. So if he had fought for his family like he fought for his religion, we would still be married today. But he got off course, and it, the fame changed his life. But this is the thing. Being married to him that time, if, if some man don't want to straight him just do right for his family, he just want to do right for himself, it's okay. So I just get off that boat and move on. And the thing of it is, the legends, the fact that he hold the word to everything that I said in my word, I promised him that he would go far if he only listened. And he didn't have to listen, but he did. And I'm, I'm thankful for that because he wanted to be great. And he listened to every word I said because I told him, if you do this, you'll be great. If you do that, you'll be greater. And he goes, how do you know? Oh, how do you know all this little stuff when you haven't been anywhere? I said, it's okay. I know about the world. I'm just learning about the family life. So the struggle, and by him really having a kind heart, um, he, was, he have a dark side, very ugly dark side. Very ugly. Very curious. Very ugly. That is going to be the whole bit. He has a very ugly dark side. But most importantly, he, when he trained himself for his boxing, he was a dedicated um, athlete. He, he stood loyal to his boxing. He stood loyal to his makeup. And he pushed through. And that's something that a lot of us can learn from, you know. Um, and so his legacy is still my legacy. It's For our sure. legacy together. And it was a beautiful thing. And I will speak only on the positive side of that. And now after I don't have to struggle and try to cheer him on and do all this stuff, my cheering is lead, leadership is over. So I decided to do what I've always done, uh, even with him, is to make sure that our children learn to better their character. Because I've seen people like Muhammad Ali turn back into Cassius Clay. They lose a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't want the kids to go back, go backwards when they grow, when they're going forward, they never try to go backwards. And he made that mistake. But um, he did a good thing at the time. And uh, we will always keep that legend alive. It was beautiful. It was hopeful. It's very inspi inspiring. And so I will always be a part of that legacy. The yeah, part of the will. beautiful. Yes. And um, so I will always support that part. Uh, the other part, the why he didn't succeed in the very end is because he wasn't trained like young women, Muslim girls or boys. Do you mind if, trained. if I? Yeah, you want to see that? There's... I saw this picture. Actually. Yeah, I that was family time. I was doing all yeah. family. I'm just showing I was it to 23 the years old. And we had all four children already. We was living in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Can I just, I'm just having a moment right now. Is that what you're just, just having a well, moment Well, you know right what? Now. I'm going to show you a moment. Can I see that picture? That's so crazy. Let me show you this picture. I brought this it's picture so for surreal. a reason. It's so cool. It's so Because wild. this picture I'm choosing to go on the cover of the, mag, uh, the book. Just like this. And, and what's your first name? Rafi. All right. Or Ra yeah. Raphael, you know. The yeah. I, I like the Rafi though. Yeah, I'm. A, it's almost like the name Rafiki. Rafiki similar. Uh, Rafiki. People called me that when I was a kid. Isn't that right? People called me that Beautiful. when I was a kid. That's a good name. Yeah, that's a that's a biblical name. It's God you heals. A very biblical name. Yeah. And I actually brought this picture for you. I'm so you thank you. Um, so look at that. You know, Ooh, I so admire. Look at that. I admire Muhammad Ali for his his stand and his dedication. Okay. Did that pull it up? Is that the pin under there? How about that? Well, that's a little thing right there. 
I got to put that back on there. I got two pins in one. How about that? All Thank right. you, Office Depot. <laughs> <laughs> that is for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And this is another this thing. Is so cool. what I decided to do was go to Color to Learn. I decided to help kids learn about their character. So I kept going around so much. The, I got a proclamation from Miami-Dade County. Mm -hmm. The mayor gave me a proclamation about my coloring books. They want to have these books in the Miami-Dade and Broward schools. So right after the pandemic, we're going to get a government contract. We're planning to have these books in all the schools of Miami-Dade. That's huge. In Broward County. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And then I have a preface that tells you why I created this book. Tells you why. And then you start off with the book saying, what's wrong with this picture? Now, usually when you color, you're just learning how to keep coloring the lines. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn something from this coloring book. So whatever's wrong with this picture, you can't figure it out. By the time you finish coloring it, on the opposite side of the picture, it tells you what's wrong with the picture and why. Just a few words. And it's really good. My favorite one is this one. What's wrong with that picture? Oh, there's, there's a oh, huge definitely thing wrong with that picture. Totally cool. That, wow, that is such yeah. a different. Yeah. And this is wow. why the color book is not just for kids. I'm making it for adults. It takes a man to turn around and walk away and let the woman cool off because sometimes, more than more than likely, the women. I've never seen women, something like this. This is so I interesting. I know it's never been done. This is first. And I dedicated this book to all my children on the back. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Color to learn. You got. <laughs> I did it all by myself on my computer. And that's just volume one. It comes in a season of volume 10. And you can learn from it. This looks like it's very, this, this looks awesome. Yeah. And then what happened is kind of introduced to different ages because it's not just the kids that forgets or lack manners and etiquette, but our adults do too. They lack them every day. And if we don't practice them, we, it will like leave our consciousness and we'll never have um, good manners. Because of George Floyd is because of the way a person acted and carried himself. Can I, George can Floyd. Can you go into that a little bit? I can go into that by look at the I officer. Have a question, though. Yes. I, it's go ahead. a very direct question. Yeah, go ahead. You, there was a, a very strong picture that had that message where there was a man hitting a woman. Yes. The, right? Yes. Back in the day, in all three religions, mm -hmm. men would do that. Like, yeah, but that, that so because it, men allowed it. Well, even now it is. The religion doesn't allow it. Think about it. You got to read saw, between the lines. I saw an imam on YouTube, mm -hmm. and, and maybe, you know, you can, uh, I don't know who he is, Okay. But he, he, he excused it. You know why? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between al-Islam mm -hmm. and Islam. Interesting. Yeah, check that out. You never heard Jesus' word. The Christ Jesus never said in his lips to form, to beat your wife. Or to, to hurt a woman. He's never said that. Ever. Mm. He's never. Muslims. See Muslims. Tend to develop. Cultural. And traditions. The cultural traditions. Had to stop. When Prophet Muhammad came. And said hey. This is Islam. There are do's and don'ts. And it's not mm. permitted. You're supposed to treat her with kindness and respect. Now, after I was growing up, I kind of tend to hear a lot of foreign Muslims beat their wives and all of this kind of stuff, right? I, that did not go well with me. That did not go. I am totally a rebel. I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, yeah. Cultural and traditions mixing with the religion. Mm -hmm. And it's not supposed to be. That's why religion had to come in to rectify that. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. And no, a man should not beat his wife. No. Well, you don't beat damn your wife. Damn straight he shouldn't. You talk to her. It's 
common you talk sense. to her in respect. She's a human being just like you are. Mm-hmm. You are equal. Equal in the way of humanity. Equal in humanity. The men are the providers, protectors. They're made that way. I completely agree. And by the way, culture is trying to change that now. They're try- yes, they it's are. messing everything up. They're trying to change it to their own hypocrisies. Mm-hmm. And you just can't do that. Taking away a man's manhood, the way that they've skewed that, you know what I mean? But they tried to do that to make the take you away from the religion. I hear that. And they take you out of the religious aspect. Don't let nobody take you out of your religious aspect, ever. Because we're coming into, we're going into a Solomon Gomorrah Act. It happened then and it's happening now. And we need to cut that Solomon Gomorrah thing out. So that lady who turned her head, so she, w- so God said, I don't want you to see the destruction of the land. You're turning into a pillar of salt. Mm-hmm. Be careful. There's a lot of salt packets going to be out there. You got to be careful. I remember that They story. need to get back into their religious aspect. Yeah, yeah no, I hear that. Yeah, I, I nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. It's going to go... Uh, it, it's going to be... Men and but it's going to be up to a person to sit down and rationalize what are you being taught. Everything's Understand okay nowadays. With, That's the problem. It's not okay. But I'm, I'm saying that I know. everything has you been know how, to be... You know how long... You see, before the Me Too Act came, you see how long that took? Because of money, egos, and people. It has nothing to do with the book. Mm-hmm. Because people, women put themselves in those conditions. And they use them because they know what the woman wants. And they use them to get what they want instead. Mm-hmm. And that is totally wrong. A woman should be able to, to get what she wants. She should get the power or the position that she needs to make other women better women. Don't make the world a better place. It's man who is corrupting the world. It's man and woman that is corrupting the world. Mm-hmm. You just have to be careful. Yeah. So anytime when I see somebody do some that kind of hate, and up now with the Asians and the hating it's Asians, horrible. these are just people who just hate. They, I don't know if they're depressed. They want to be in, in the newspapers, and they just said, well, I don't care. Just chuck it. I'll just do it it's so horrible. I can be somebody. People do that for different reasons, mm-hmm. and, and and it's and it's not acceptable. It is not acceptable, and they should be punished by the law. But I, I have a very controversial thing to say, and it's like, it's tough to even bring it up on the podcast. But What's that? I don't know if this is true or not. What's that? When it came now, let me make this straight. What happened with George Floyd is definitely wrong. The cop, what the cop did, is wrong, oh, without wrong. a question. Yeah. I I will not argue that. But do the you only got, the only ahead, thing that the only thing that I'm that I did have a bit of an issue with is supposedly, and I'm, I'm not excusing the behavior of the cop. I want to reiterate that. Mm-hmm. There is a claim that George Floyd broke into a house a while back and held a, wo- a pregnant woman at knife point. Yeah. Now, well, see, besides the point mm-hmm. of all his problems, he should have been arrested and going to jail. Agreed. He is not. It's not acceptable for him to die over something like that. No, I agree. I, all yeah. I'm saying There's is... There's no excuses for it. Right. See, this is the thing. It's not the fact that he killed a black man to me. It's the fact that he did it around his superiors, and they allowed him to go along with it. You have different officers in the system. Mm-hmm. You have police officers putting their life on the line with the minute they walk out their door. And it's gotten that bad. The behavior of a lot of these men who get arrested, I mean, who cusses at a cop and throw f- 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 uh, profanities out and this guy's carrying a gun? Who's stupid enough to do that? People, it's ridiculous. Well, then that's their behavior. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel it's right for no one to kill anyone. They should be punished. They should be savored 
and protect it until they are punished. A lot of times people don't feel that justice will be served because of Southern acts, certain, certain routines that cops has been hiding away for a long time. This, they, these things has happened to these people. This ain't the first time this has happened. Okay. This ain't nothing new. Mm -hmm. They don't just pick on black. If they pick on black people, that's a shame. They shouldn't be in the police department. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I sense and people tell me, well, half the police department are KKK. Well, you sh you don't want to put them in office. Mm -hmm. You just don't put KKK in office. Oh, damn straight. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think most cops are bad. To be honest, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. You have people who use their egos and their authority to do wrong and harm to others. It has nothing to do with their color. They have it in them. It can happen to a black man or a white man. Mm -hmm. You know. And what has to change? is the fact that officers should not support another officer when he is doing wrong. He should pull his coattail and mm -hmm. don't allow him to make them look bad. And that's the thing. It's a it's a blue on blue click. Right. It's a blue on blue click. For and sure. you know what? These police officers, most of the time when they hi get hired to be a man of authority to help people to serve and protect I would say 75% of them are honest about what their job is supposed to be uh, the fact that they have different nationality officers working together today because time has changed and taken the hate out of it but you have to give them respect black people hate white people just like white people hate black people you got you got haters all over the world, yeah. and it doesn't matter your color. If you hate, that's bad. Mm -hmm. If you hate, it has nothing to do with color. It's just something that you have to do, and something you probably seen your dad do. Uh, you've been trained to do that. Right. But this is the thing: the service people, the first responders, these people are tell. Are putting their lives on the line to to protect you, and more, more nine times out well, seven times out of ten that's what they do. So, you know, Bec I, because if you get rid of your 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 police department, and you bring militia in here, you're in trouble. So that's exactly where I was going. You don't have a chance. They ain't gonna ask you questions. No, there's they no gonna shoot between the eyes. Boom, it's so over. It happens in these other countries. And it, would, it happens Becomes in the third tribal. world come all the time. Because right. you should share, cherish your police officer. You should go in there, but you have to be careful. These pe people is out to hate you. They're out rapping songs about the hate. They're rapping songs and they're bringing the drugs in your neighborhood and you're, and you're allowing it. So something's got to, somebody got to stand up and make a stand. Wow, this is really good. It's not about the black and the white. Right, I hear you. You have to give each other the benefit of the doubt that they're okay. Even though the static says usually when they see somebody doing something wrong, then they probably are doing something wrong, and then most of the time the police will provoke. And you have to be strong enough to humble yourself and not be provoked. Yeah, I think. And then if you're not, if you do not provoke an officer, then that's even better on your case. It will be better for you and your case. It's like from the book with exactly. the with the the man and woman. If the man you know choose, chooses to you know he chooses to just turn around. I think you know when because it comes women to can make a she she know <laughs> how to push a man's buttons. Yeah. I I ain't gonna lie. We got skills, bro. We got, <laughs> we got skills, and usually uh, I would say fifty percent of the chance a woman's provoking you. She's going to put you oh, in jail. Honest. If she don't like you, she wants you to go to jail. You know, it's funny with cops. Like, there, I've been pulled over here, and they're very rarely, but, like, for speeding or whatever. And um, anytime the cop was a bit of an a-hole, I was just, I just kept my mouth shut. 
You yeah. Know? And I think like most of that. the time, as long as you're good, the moment you start, because a lot of it's emotional, you start giving them attitude, that's when they get that power trip. They you do. just let they them do. do. Get the power trip. You just let them do. Give them the I idea. speak out first. I what speak says? out so quickly so they won't even have time to think about what they're going to do to me. I so speak too fast. Hey, officer, how you doing? Did I do something wrong? Talk to me, brother. Talk to me. I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm working, I'm working with you, all right? You have to have a happy attitude. Right. Now, there are times that black men are just picked on and they just say, well, we're going to get this one and they have a target. out." But the best thing that you can fight their target is don't give it anything to work with. You get 100%. mad at them back, then then you got a problem. It's and it's going to make, it's going to escalate. Sense. It's going to escalate. And because there are people who, who really do hate. But, sure. uh, but you know what? We have to realize that all human beings, every soul that the creator have created has a right to live and their no, lives always matter. I don't I don't want to get in just black lives matter. I'm not for that. I'm 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 for all lives matter. I'm for all lives matter. Just don't hate. You don't have to hate. Black people hate just as bad as white people hate. So you don't need to get into that. You need to get off of the hate, go back to your holy book, and think about what Jesus said, what Moses said, what Abraham said, what Muhammad said. Listen to your history. Be humble. Be grateful. It's a shame we can't drop the mic because it's connected to the... <laughs> just take it off the table and chuck it down you know what and another thing that i have another problem with we have been through a very hard row afro-americans black americans whatever name they're gonna call it next year whatever they've been through a lot but this is the thing you can read now you can write you can go to any university, then you can learn to afford to, 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 to succeed. Mm -hmm. You can't be blaming people for your conditions. You can't be blaming people for your, your own fault because nothing and no one, if you're a child of the Supreme Creator, you can do anything that your heart desire, but to take all these Love this, institutions, you do? This is, I Because I agree Thank with you. it so much. Really? I do too. Because we all, you know, uh, everyone, uh, different groups have had it very difficult. Yes. You know, you know, yes. Jews have been through slavery, black people have been through slavery, and we should never ignore that. We should never ignore that. I know that. And at but the that's same a time, history we have learned. We have to, we have to move forward Can with it. Can you imagine? Everyone's got I go to LA Fitness and I swim in the pool like everybody else, and there's nobody telling me, no, go over there and swim in the black pool. Right. So you sleep in the color pool. Do you know how far we've come? Come on now. How long are we going to take this little petty bickering? This petty bickering. So, what difference does it make now? I couldn't agree more. When you go to the hospital, do they decide, well, he's <laughs> black, we don't give her no good medicine, we'll get a white one? Who does that? Nobody right. does that. When people go in for the COVID, they go in and they try to help them out the best way they can. When I had the COVID, man, I have never seen so much grace and so much concern and so many people trying to save my life. And they're there for you. People are actually literally there for you. And your fate will either destroy you or destroy your lineage. If you're going to allow hate to destroy what you deserve now, you don't need to have it in the first place. Blame everybody we want to blame. You got Democrats. You got Republicans. I ain't scared to say nothing about no politics. You think mean. that's going to scare me off this here boat? <laughs> Hell no. They I'm, both have hate in their heart. Yeah, I'm so distant you know, from do it. Do you know Couldn't care less. how different... You have the Muslims coming over. Nobody knows anything about them. They don't even, sometimes they don't even work together to, for you to find out who they are. Right. They're so, 
they get so ignorant they don't even want to work with you or know anything about you like like you're taboo that's the muslims problem they don't communicate with others they don't let others know who they are we have that too you, we have it all the time but oh, check this out you have, oh, yeah you have orthodox jews who have yeah, that too. I, of course when and it becomes very kind of insular and, and you, they don't, you're, you're you know. alone and you keep yourself alone. But if you are any kind of religious person, you want to open up to them, tell, talk to them, communicate, with them, learn, teach them who you are, teach them what you do. It's not going to hurt you. And you have a lot of Muslims that, that keeps away from you. They are afraid you're, you're haram. You're, yeah. Yeah. Now, how are they going to be haram when you're acting like that? You're haram. Right. Okay? Right. So this is the thing. This government and this society has done so much for the American people. Our father and forefathers who are white know this, who know the book, who know their people. He know they're going to be evil people destroying your lives in this community. That's why they said we are all People who are made equal. I real quick though, cause I, to be honest with you, what? I barely follow politics anymore. I am so tired. Politics of it, is it necessary. Affect, yeah, I try in, to, in a way. In the long run, it is necessary to be part of your political issues. Yeah. So you can have freedom of what you want to do. You right. will be able to vote people who don't deserve to be in the offices mm -hmm. that do you wrong. And you have to start learning to vote them out. It is important to be political. I hear it's that. It's important to be a part of it, to have your say. So you can be a part of keeping people that you know are out of political office and put the people in and give them a chance. And if they get in there and change, and kick them out again. So your, your interest of this political world is very important. Yeah, I hear that. It it just is. a lot of it is just. I so have much. worked with a lot of human beings. I have worked with political parties. I've worked with, worked with the Democrat parties, and I've worked with the um, uh, Republican parties. And believe it or not, I have gotten more work out of Republican parties than the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's amazing. Uh, I just came from Virginia, and I went, went to the Republican Party, and they were beautiful. They enlarged my speech. I went to go to the Democrat Party first time I was ever. They closed the door on me. Really? Oh yeah, because of hate. Because of hate. You have to open up your heart, love, and see what you can do together. You have to work together. The Biden administration, he didn't throw he didn't throw darts or nothing at the Republican Party. He didn't re he refused to go that way. Mm -hmm. And that and that's a good thing. That's a good man who refused to do things. He fell down the stairs. That was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. He's he's Feel he's, bad, he's up in age, you know. Yeah, he's, he's a little, he little on little, the older side. Yeah. I wish we had a person like Spartacus running the country, somebody <laughs> strong and big and not too weak. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as far as appearance because we need yeah. to vote for younger people in office. It's, yeah, we never Get do. these old hags out. <laughs> it's He doesn't have a very strong image, to be quite it honest. It doesn't matter. As long yeah. as he do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. But we need to get some. This is why yeah, we've is. got to work with younger people. To get, I'm, not, I'm not running. <laughs> try, to, try, to get, get, try to get a young person with an old soul in there. They're out there. Yeah. They're out I, I there. I think I kind of have we that. we need but. them. Mm -hmm. And we need them. We need them. I and to, your political opinion is very important. I hear where you're coming from. I, I, I still don't put too much stock into it, but I hear what I you're know saying. You, you don't have to put stock into it, but you do at the end of the day. You want to have your say, and you do not yeah. want somebody in office that doesn't deserve to be in office. You know, I think in, in during the election times, this is a good time to actually, actually watch a person during the year and see – how they handle their communities. I, it looks like they're putting uh, the governments in separate entities, like they're having governors to run certain things in their state mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the senators run certain things in their state. Mm -hmm. And I think when you break it up like that, I think it'll be interesting because people will know what to do in their own workplace. You know, you got to get somebody who knows the city, 
who knows the people and it's not they're not in office just for the money yeah so i guess it's just hard to gauge that for certain people that's it but all people are really in their deep down in their heart people are basically good they were they were created to be good and when they get tainted believe me it'll surface yeah it's a, you know, you that's just a, be that's quiet very, and listen that's a very contra uh Sometimes I feel I, I feel like a lot of people have good intention, but at the end of the day, a lot of most of us do want what's best for us, right? They do. So they really we, do. there's a selfishness. To, I think I was talking about this on a on a an ep, another episode. Yeah. And uh, he was saying that he thinks all people are naturally selfish. They, and not, yeah. Right. And they're and, lazy. <laughs> do you see how lazy you are now? You got uh, DoorDash now. People don't want to go to the store no more. They rather have it DoorDash at the door. Huh? That COVID did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are very, very lazy. Yeah, we don't want to get up from the couch. It's they crazy. don't want to get up from the couch. They're very lazy. So, you know, and I don't b- I believe that people have to really worry so much and don't fear your vaccines and everything. The vaccines and this and the doc- democracy with the government has taken care and protected our people for a very long time. Uh, they didn't need your damn opinion when it came to the cholera. They didn't need your damn opinion when it came to polio. They didn't need your damn opinion. But they were there to help you. Mm-hmm. They have medicines and everything that has side effects, yes. But they want it to cure. People back in the 70s, I had a cousin had lupus. She died almost instantly at 34 years old. Wow. I know my neighbor, she's got lupus and she's, she just made 60. And my cousin didn't even live one year longer than that. So America is good with vaccines because the scientists who are out there, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Follow the guidelines of your vaccine. Every medicine is not going to agree with you. Everybody can't take penicillin. Everybody has got allergies. There is allergic reason and side effects on every medicine that ever have come out in the world. But the majority of the vaccines are basically good. It's because of your health that might have a reaction. Because people at 45 got so many health issues. I'm 71. I don't have that many health issues. There you go. I've just been blessed, and my mama fed me the right things at the right time, and I grew up properly, and I ate the right thing. The Jewish person, they'll live a long time because they eat the right thing. And if the Christians follow their Bible, they'll eat the right thing. It's hard to understand that because you have some very religious people that, that die when they're extremely young. That's what's always it's, uh, it's, hard. It's not about when they die. It's the fact that you want to live healthy in this earth so your children can be healthy just in the process and this is the struggle for being focused on yourselves. And your mind is not running out into stuff that you don't need to get involved in. Mm-hmm. The young people have so much energy. And they got so many paths to choose from. Yeah, well, you have a ton of energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Yeah. I mm-hmm. feel like I'm feeling now at 38. Yeah. You I was hot. I was <laughs> eager. And I was ready to go. You know what I'm saying? And believe you me, I still feel that way because these are the things I got to work on. These are the things I'm excited about. These are the things that's important to me. Nobody has to follow me. Just follow life. The good part of life. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You don't have to be a rocket science to figure that out. But this is the thing. We die every day. The creator has already gave us our number. It's wild when you put it like that. Yeah, it's scary. I just don't, I'd rather not know. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of death, though. I'll be honest. I, I'm, I'm just grateful to have another we day. We all are. I'm just grateful to have another day. We are. I mean, we are. I, yeah, but you do come to your sense and say, hey, you know what? I wake scary. up this morning, God. Thank you, Allah. Thank you for letting me live this long. Another day. And then Ramadan is coming up. I'm ready to do Ramadan again. And... And then the Jewish, I, you know, I have a rabbi too, you know, my rabbi named Rabbi Frank. And I can't wait for Shul to come. I can't wait for Hanukkah. I can't wait for all these beautiful things that these beautiful words are sharing throughout the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
the thing is, we have to learn to make us happy. That's all. If you focus on making you happy, then you're focused on making your children happy. And all that other rhetoric out there. And there's less hate, room for hate. Yeah, just yeah. learn to be happy. For sure. You can be happy. You can be in a... Does that, does that goat look like, like he happy to you? He looks, he looks ecstatic. He looks, yeah. And he's licking his tongue out at us. Yeah. You know what? I used to cut you down and make barbecue goat sandwiches out of you. You know that? Mm-hmm. But you know what? It's, it's, it's all about being happy, being wonderful, being exhilarated with life itself. Yeah, the more you focus if on If you're your on own. the street, be happy. Just mm-hmm. be happy you are alive. Focus on positiveness. Focus on getting off the street. God will take you off the street if you want to. You only want to be there because you want to be there. But you can get yourself out of any situation. And you don't have to steal for it. You don't have to lie for it. Just be honest with yourselves. God will always open that door and be ready for you. But if you're ready for him, Mm -hmm. if you want to be a good Christian, be a good one. If you want to be a Jewish person, be a good one. Just be the best you can be because it's all good. It's all good. That's awesome. And respect that. those who believe in other things. But the other things that they believe in, it might not go on your schedule, mm-hmm. but it will go in your humanity. It's awesome. And it's good to learn about each other. Yeah. It's good 100%. about I mean, I, I was used to clean houses and I had been around Jewish people a lot. And and we know about the dairy dishes and the meat dishes are separate and all that. All that kind of stuff. I mean, these are routines. Mm-hmm. And when you learn people's routine, you respect their routines. Yeah, pretty you know. It's pretty simple. Live and let live is a pretty simple There concept. you go. I, I wanted to uh, talk about your show a little bit. Okay. Oh, yes. That is so wonderful. That's exciting. We can't forget about that. You know, that. back in the day, in 1978, when I was going through a divorce with Muhammad Ali, I used to be an activist with Jane Fonda and Tom Hayden. And Jane Fonda introduced me to Cesar Chavez. He is the Martin Luther King of Mexico. And the farm workers wasn't getting but $2 for 17 hours of work. Mm -hmm. That's not only slavery, that's crazy. So we boycotted Chiquita Bananas because of people who owned the cabbages and the bananas. Um... They wasn't given a right payment for the farm workers. Mm -hmm. So Jane Fonda and I went on a campaign to help the people give more money and more wages for the farm workers. Doing that, Jane was so excited with me. She said, you know what? I would really want to do a movie with you. But I love being around you, and I just enjoy you so much. And I said, okay, Jane, thank you. But being around Jane, knowing Jane, she's a woman of her word. She don't just say stuff to say stuff. So I'm going, eh, what am I going to do? So I called D- Dustin, a friend of mine, Dustin Hoffman. I said, Dustin, who's the greatest trainer? Can you just say Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. It's my friend. Yeah, Jane found it. You, you and met. Dustin said, well, if he's still alive, it would be Lee Strasberg. Can you get Dustin on my podcast? Say what? I said, can you get Dustin on my podcast? Why not? Dustin, did you hear that? I'm coming for you. Oh, right. That would there be huge. Go. Oh, that would be amazing. Dustin is amazing. Yeah. It's because of Dustin. I know how to act. Because I, I looked up Lee Strasberg, and I went to his, his uh, institute in Los Angeles, and I moved down there to take some lessons, mm-hmm. and he taught me. I had a great time with him he's not only a good director or teacher but the guy can cook real good really oh salads he invited me to his house i met shelly winters over his house and so many other people and uh it was amazing coming up around los angeles meeting so cool i met william link colombo all the greats i went to screenplays and you know, movie theaters with Buddy Hackett and George Kennedy and, you know, Michael York. I mean, I met Ra- uh, Ray Bradbury and 
and Cesar Romero. Woo! I remember this Japanese guy who played in Star Trek, and I was a Trekkie. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, we was all at the same dinner table. I forgot his Japanese name, but I'm not sure I, but he had, what was his name? No, I, I wasn't yeah, at yeah. Star Trek. Well, he yeah. had a cast on his leg, mm -hmm. and he was sitting next to me, and Cesar Romero was on the opposite side. Ray Barrows, great Ray girl, Suzanne Plachette was over here, and uh, many, many others. I could just name you. <laughs> Just to sit in their presence is amazing. So, yeah, but you're, uh, you're talking as if, like, they probably thought you were a, a, such and a good... And they did. But they did. And I, I loved every minute of it. I did. And and I asked him, I said, how did you break your leg? And he looked at me straight in my face and said, a Klingon kicked me. I said, okay. Wait, what kicked him? A Klingon. A Klingon. I fell for that. Hook, line, and sinker. Anyway, to me, all these great people, uh, the Martin Sheens, the Estevez, uh, John Carradine and his wife, James Bridges and Lord Bridges, Jim Bridges, I mean, to me, all these, and the Douglases, and I met all these people in the 70s. This was amazing. I was sitting on a boat with the producer, Erwin Allen, who produced the Poseidon Fitch, and he said, go ahead and look, we, we're doing a movie. And I saw George Kennedy and Shirley Winter jump into the water, and it was amazing, amazing. So Jane Fonda and I saw, when I went to the class, and when she called me for a, a, a call, um, Jim Bridges said, why do you want to do this movie? I said, it's an interesting challenge, but I think the best thing you could do is hire me today. That would be the best thing you can do because I can learn a lot from it. And he said, okay. It was just a test to say something because you're already in it. So there you go. So I did it, and I did very good. And Hold on. I, if, you can get, if you can get Cassius Clay to change his name to Muhammad Ali, you can do whatever you want. I, you think so? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, we're, you know we're, what I'm saying? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're good. you good. So... Meeting and learning acting, and I did my first, first feature film in the award-winning China Syndrome with Jack Nicholson, Jane Fonda, Michael Douglas. That was wow. my heart. I mean, do you know how I felt, a woman from Chicago, and I'm meeting, I'm in the room with all these great actors? <sighs> so this is the thing. Jane Fonda was an anchor woman. Michael Douglas was the cameraman. Mm -hmm. And I was the director in the newsroom. Leading role. Great. And I loved it. But I had a lot of problems with my families around that time. So when I finished doing the acting, I did a couple other movies. Teen Wolf, uh, uh, Chuck Norris, a lot of... Uh, it's, it's just that I, 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 I had a little problems in my life that I had to straighten out. So I went back to Chicago. I, I, was, I was in Screen Actors Guild since 78. I, I get paid off at China Center for 40 years. I should have just kept that up. I would have been rich by now. <laughs> but this is the thing. I said after this book is out and that's done, I want to get back into film because I wanted to develop more conscience film, something positive for our youth so they can have fun with their lives and not be on the destructive road. That'd be so, interesting, doing film. And it, like you have your you have your coloring book. Yes. You can, it, I can actually put that in a film. That'd be so cool. I can. And you know what? So last <clears throat> Christmas, around that time, um, a friend of mine was researching me doing films and everything and found out I wanted to do films. And I said, well, we got a film. We think... If Kalila would come on board, I think she would bring a little excitement to the film. Mm -hmm. And so the guys, uh, Lee Carter, executive producer, and um, Juice Bigelow, who had already had the series The Grid on Amazon Prime, and it had five series up already, uh, episodes up. And I go, 
And you want me to do what now? He said, I want you to play Mama Soleil, a woman of the community with Haitian descent. And she kind of against her style. And you're trying to help your brother to get out of the cartels. Because we're dealing with cartels every day. I said, fine. So as I got on the film, I'm not going to just sit there and watch. I'm going to say, well, where are you getting your gun from? Well, if you can tell us where we can get some guns and we'll pay them or rent them, uh, I'll let you do that part. But most importantly, um, that's your job. I said, okay. So I called a place where I shoot my gun at, at all the time. I practice. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine named Dan, he uh, runs a uh, the National uh, Gun Armory over there on Atlanta Boulevard. But he has his own company called American Guns mm. and the American Gun and uh, Range. And Dan said, okay, Kalila, uh, who's your producer? I'll talk to him. And I said, you talk to him and he'll tell you what he needs. So he calls the producer <laughs> and say, uh, I'm Dan. I'm with Kalila's Gun Range. And she said, you need guns. He said, are you the producer? He said, well, you could have just asked Kalila that. She's a producer, too. He said, but she didn't tell me she was a producer. He said, I know, because I haven't told her yet. Oh, snap. And so he said, really? So he called me back, and we arranged and had the guns at the ABNB, and we did our film. So he said, oh, so now I'm a social producer. Yeah, you're going to make this really something. So fortunately, in the past... I have already developed my casting company mm-hmm. two, three years ago. And I cast people from Orlando doing the, the uh, Disney. I got cast from the Disney Adventures and from Pirates Caribbean. I've got a lot of cast out of there. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, and it's called the greatest casting agency at AOL.com. So I had already developed and start collecting people for my agency, and half the whole staff is from my casting company. So if you want to come from my casting company, you need to put your picture on the casting company. Send me your picture. I sent it your to you. Diamond. You already did? You, you told me to. <laughs> then I guess I'll be casting you for the summer. Is the greatest casting agency at AOL.com. Where can you find the show, The Grid? The Grid, okay. I'm in episode six and my whole staff. This will be the first time the episode would be about 45 minutes long. Mm -hmm. The other episode that they had before me was like 15, maybe 20 minutes. Not even that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get Amazon to promote us and give us enough rank to pay the actors. So... We're working on that. But I've had a lot of offers of people wanting to do the whole good the grid as a film. So I really like it. Now, now we discuss a lot of things on this show. And I just want to let you know that since I have such a passion for the police department, because I've had several people in my family work with the police departments and fire departments. And so I came up with an idea to make a cop series so we can get bad guys out of our neighborhoods and the gangs out of our neighborhoods to protect our children. And my show, that I, the movie I want to be doing is called, which I'll probably cast you in, it's called Pure Justice. It's a comedy. Okay. Yeah, because all this bad stuff is so horrific. You, you got to make fun out of it, otherwise it's depressing. I hear that. Yep. So. You know what's funny about comedy? Because I was t- I was telling this to to my I think we were, I think my roommate and I we did an episode and I think that's who I talked about it with. Mm-hmm. It must have been him. It's funny how sometimes it's the comedians who are able to deliver the biggest truths. Exactly. Like with uh, Chris Rock. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hart. Definitely. Definitely Kevin Hart. Ice Cube. Um, well, Ice Cube is not a comedian, but he can be very funny. Um, Omar Epps. 
I mean, it's funny the comedians. Mike Epps, no, Mike Epps, and mm. um, these. Dave Chappelle for sure. <laughs> David Chappelle, I love him. <laughs> oh gosh, he's oh. number one. He's, he's pretty oh, much number one. Oh, I want one. to meet David Chappelle in the best way. You haven't, you you haven't met him. Never met him yet. David Chappelle. David, I'm coming after you. He is so warm and so, and he's Muslim. I I didn't know that actually. Yeah, I didn't he, know that. He, he, Does he practice at all? Um, you know what? That's the thing. Anybody that's in any religion, it takes time for you to wean out your bad habits. Mm -hmm. That's what the religion is for, so you can get better. So he does have a couple of habits that Muslims don't do, but he's working on it. He is hilarious, but he's yeah. that's the thing, though. He, but he's he very speaks true these truths. He speaks direct. Oh, he says he's things. He's so funny. Sometimes people well, listen to things more. Well, he doesn't drug anything. I just fall on the floor he's hilarious he's hilarious he, he's I, I would say he, he's mm -hmm. yeah i met i've hung out with frank sinatra for months really and years and days at a time when i when we was on the same shelf we lived me and ali lived on the same h hallway on the same floor of the fountain blue with with Elvis right you across from Blue, Miami Beach. Yeah. Yo, you. There was a point you were living there. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks to Frank Sinatra. Wow. But it's Frank Sinatra that stood and said, "Black people must be. Where they can come into hotels. They're entertainers, and I will not sing again." And it happens. Turned that around just like that. Frank Sinatra is the man. He was a hero. He was. Mm. Captain America to me. He was. There's nothing like hearing he his music was on a random a day. Chairman. Of the board with a heart of empathy. Henry Youngwin and Meryl Torme and Dean Martin. I've seen them stand up and say the most greatest thing about humanity you'll never hear again. I think said to Ali because he, he drew with those kind of people. It's awesome. John Gotti. Of all people, I met him too. Nice, nice fellow. Do have you to. got to tune to the grid. I'm in I episode will. six. How will? And we're gonna be making it better YouTube? and better. How it's gonna I, be on I? Amazon Prime. It's up there now. Check it out. Five episodes are already up. You can go look at it any time awesome. you wish. Okay, check it out. Make sure to watch it. <laughs> Let us know what you think, uh, Kalila. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And all I can all say is. Don't count the days. Make the days count that you're here. And also, be good in your heart and in your soul to others. And with respect. And you will go a long way. God be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Khalil Ali. Thank you.